Hello, my name is Irbot Hasanov. I am postdoctoral scholar at ESAI. Today I will cover machine learning basics on ensemble learning methods such as bagging, boosting, and stacking. So, what is ensemble learning? Ensemble learning is a machine learning technique where multiple models are combined to solve the same problem. As the name suggests, ensemble learning utilizes the advantages of multiple base models to compensate each model's weaknesses. The main principle behind ensemble learning is to group weak learners together to form one strong learner that achieves better performance than any individual weak learner. In ensemble learning, we call weak learner the models that perform not so well by themselves either because they have high bias or because they have high variance. Recall the bias variance trade-off where the underfitted model has high bias and low variance and the overfitted model has low bias and high variance. The ensemble learning models can be categorized into two types based on the choice of weak learners, homogeneous and heterogeneous. In homogeneous ensemble model, a single base learning algorithm is used. For example, all weak learners are based on decision tree algorithm. On the other hand, in heterogeneous ensemble model, different base learning algorithms are used. For example, the weak learners are based on decision tree, support vector machines, and k-nearest neighbors algorithms. However, note that the choice of weak learners should be coherent with the way we combine these models. For example, if we choose the base models with high variance and low bias, then the combination method should aim to reduce the variance. On the other hand, if we choose the base model with high bias and low variance, then the combination method should aim to reduce the bias. There are three popular combination methods in ensemble learning, bagging, boosting, and stacking. Now, let's see how each of the combination methods work. The bagging method, which stands for bootstrap aggregating, aims to produce an ensemble model that has less variance than its components. It first learns several homogeneous weak learners with high variance, and then Combine them by using some averaging process. One important question is how to obtain so much data to train the weak learners, because in practice the data is always insufficient. The solution is to use bootstrapping. To understand the bagging, we should first understand the bootstrapping. In machine learning, the bootstrapping refers to resampling techniques used for generating bootstrap datasets from the given initial dataset. Imagine that we are given a dataset of patients' MRI records consisting of five samples, where the following variables will be used to predict whether a patient has a cancer. Note that in the real-world problems, the initial dataset size should be large enough to capture most of the complexity of the underlying true distribution. To create the bootstrap dataset, we randomly select samples from the initial dataset. The samples are drawn independently from each other. Let's assume that we want our bootstrap dataset to be the same size as the initial dataset. Note that we might pick the same sample more than once. So here is our first sample that we randomly select, second sample, third sample, fourth sample. Note that it is the same as the first sample. And finally, here is our fifth sample, which is the same as our third sample. This process is repeated until we create a bootstrap dataset for every weak learner. Let's assume that we have three weak learners and therefore we create three bootstrap datasets. Next, the bootstrap datasets are used to train the weak learners. The training can be performed in parallel. Lastly, we aggregate the weak learners into some kind of averaging process. There are several possible ways to aggregate the multiple models. For a regression problem, the outputs of individual models can be averaged to obtain the output of the ensemble model. For the classification problem, the class outputted by each model can be seen as a word and the class that receives the majority of the words is returned by the ensemble model. This is called hard voting. We can also consider the probabilities of each classes returned by all the models. Average these probabilities and keep the class with the highest average probability. This method is known as soft voting. To sum up, the bagging algorithm can be described as follows. First, 
we create many random subsets of the initial dataset by using the bootstrapping technique. Next, we train machine learning model on each subset. And lastly, we average the predictions from all the models. One of the popular begging examples is a random forest algorithm. In random forest, multiple deep decision trees with high variance are trained on bootstrapped datasets and combined to produce a sample model with lower variance. Random forests differ in only one way from the general bagging technique. In addition to the randomly selecting the samples from the initial dataset, they also select random subsets of features for training the weak learners. We will not cover the random forest algorithm in this lecture. Another popular combination methods in ensemble learning are boosting methods, which follow the same principle as bagging, where multiple homogeneous weak learners are combined to obtain a strong learner that performs better than any individual weak learner. However, unlike the bagging that mainly aims at reducing the variance, the boosting aims at reducing the bias. Consequently, the base models that are often considered for boosting are models with low variance and high bias. For example, if we want to use decision trees as our base models, we should choose shallow trees, which are also known as stamps. While in bagging, the base models are trained independently from each other, in boosting, the base models are trained sequentially. Thus, the training of a model at a given step depends on the models trained at the previous steps. Another important feature of boosting is that each model in the sequence is trained giving more importance to samples in the dataset that were badly handled by the previous models in the sequence. Consequently, each new model focuses its efforts on the most difficult samples. Now, let's see how a boosting algorithm works using an example. First, the initial dataset is used to train the first weak learner. Next, we update the training dataset based on the results of current ensemble learner. For example, we can increase the number of samples misclassified by weak learner 1. The updated dataset is then used to train the second weak learner. Consequently, the second model will aim at improving the results on difficult samples. To create the next updated dataset, we will use the results of the current ensemble model. We will explain how to aggregate the weak learners later. And the new updated dataset is used to train the third weak learner. This process is repeated until some criteria is met. For example, the total number of weak learners to train. In this example, let's assume that we set the number of weak learners to train to 3. There are several possible ways to aggregate the multiple models. The most popular one is a weighted sum of the weak learners, where CI is a coefficient computed based on the performance of corresponding weak learner FI. The popular boosting algorithm include Adaboost, Gradient Boosting, and XGBoost. The general procedure of these algorithms is almost the same as we explained in previous slides, and therefore we will not cover them here. Next, let's understand the last combination method, which is stacking. Different from the bagging and boosting combination methods, the stacking often considers heterogeneous weak learners. Additionally, stacking learns to combine the base models using a meta model, whereas bagging and boosting use some averaging process. So, in order to build a stacking model, we need to define two things, the base algorithms for weak learners and the meta model that will combine these weak learners. Let's understand the stacking with the example. For example, for a classification problem, we can choose following weak learners, decision tree, k nearest neighbors, and support vector machines. As a meta model, we can use the neural networks we should take as inputs the outputs of our three weak learners and we'll learn to return final predictions based on them. Next, we have to follow these steps. First, split the initial dataset into two folds. The first fold will be used to train our weak learners. Then, use the trained weak learners to predict the samples in the second fold. Lastly, use the predictions to train the meta model. Note that we shouldn't use the predictions made on the first fold to train the meta model. Instead of two fold, we can also use k fold cross training, 
which is similar to key fault cross validation, where all samples are used to train both the weak learners and the meta model. In key fault cross training, k minus one faults are used to train the weak learners, whereas the remaining fault is used to train the meta model. Now let's conclude our lecture. Ensemble learning is a machine learning paradigm where multiple models are trained to solve the same problem. We covered three popular ensemble learning methods, bagging, boosting, and stacking. The main goal of these methods is to combine multiple weak learners to achieve better performance than its components. Note that other combination variants are also possible and can be designed to better fit the given specific problem.